We have a jam-packed show. We're going well over an hour today because we're never not working on today's episode. We're going through half of the matchups, starts of the week, and my best personal 100% written by me, boom, boom, kicker of the week. Stay tuned. Enjoy the show. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and win your, win your matchup this week, will you? Do that for me. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology provides a continuously invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. And Foot Clan, we want to thank Coinbase for sponsoring today's show. If you're, uh, you've been looking to level up your financial portfolio, crypto, it's always good to diversify. And why not think about crypto? Cryptocurrency. It's backed by the world's leading investors. Coinbase keeps your portfolio safe, secure, while adding crypto into the mix. Coinbase offers a trusted and easy-to-use platform to buy, sell, spend cryptocurrency. They support the most popular digital currencies on the market and make them accessible to everyone. They offer portfolio management and protection, learning resources, a mobile app. You can trade securely and monitor your crypto all in one place. Uh, I have had a, a Coinbase account for many years. That was my introduction into the cryptocurrency space, and they did. They made it easy. That, that was where I was worried about. It's like, this is, sounds confusing. Coinbase is not confusing at all. It's, it's a fantastic app. And for a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at Coinbase.com slash footballers. Sign up at Coinbase.com slash footballers for $10 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. That's Coinbase.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. <laughs> Workout version. <laughs> For one oh, team. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, November 11th, 2021. It is Veterans Day. Shout out to all the veterans who have served. Our country, yes. thank you. Yes, thank you. And uh, you know, we were in the studio yesterday, and we were discussing uh, the date, right, uh, November eleventh. Yes, and, yes. And we said, you know, like my kids are off today on a Thursday, and they're mm -hmm. back tomorrow. And we wondered, like, you know, some holidays are like the, you know, always the third Tuesday of the month. Mm -hmm. The reason? Do you know the reason why oh, it's November eleventh? I do not. See, I said I. What's I'd, this? That's great. This is great. Eleven Let's, is my favorite number. I assumed it was because it was everybody's favorite number. Eleven, eleven is the best day. Celebrate veterans. That's wrong. <laughs> That's no, not correct. Now they, they they don't just celebrate things on your favorite number. Okay. Well, let's find out why. Uh, but when World War One ended, okay, which was the Treaty of Versailles, mm -hmm. but fighting stopped earlier when there was an armistice on the eleventh day of the 11th month at 11 a.m. And that is why well, Veterans there Day... there you go. And, That's and nice. we can't just like mix it up because Canada, Great Britain, and Australia celebrate it as well. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe that is why 11 is my favorite number. And I learned all of that maybe. from one of my kids' school teachers. So... Oh, those darn kids yeah. learning. Thought it was pretty interesting. That's but, pretty cool, uh, yeah. We've got a lot on today's episode. We have some news to talk about. The return of a long lost drop on the show today. Uh, we have the fantasy forecast part one getting into the week 10 matchups. We have starts of the week, the boom, boom kicker. We've got never not working, which is that it's becoming a fan favorite segment of the show. So as you enjoy that segment, the pressure builds to keep, keep delivering the goods. Never. In that segment. I never feel pressure. Oh, you, you were crying. I'm a you, valve. Were, you were crying I yesterday. Am a, I am a open valve, just the steam's going out. Mm -hmm. No pressure mm -hmm. ever building. Sure, sure. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Invite you to check out our community, jointhefoot.com for an extra show, a bunch of premium tools and resources to help you win each week. And um, let's get right into it. Never not working. 
presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, I'm jumping in today. I will be handling the never not working in this. You always do the never working. Yeah. Around it's, here. It's the best. <laughs> you should try it out. <laughs> you get nothing done. It's great. <laughs> uh, but we want to talk about second half league winners. And because, you know, that's what everyone's looking for. It's the second half. Who's who's about to take off uh, and who's going to take me to the, the championship? And so we just wanted to look at, you know, not necessarily just who could do it, but where what are the signs? What do we need to be looking for? Those variables that, that could flip into the right direction. Uh, you know, how often does it happen? And this week we're taking a look at the quarterback position and the running back position. And, you know, we looked over the last three seasons, you know, how many players are actually making that tier jump and, and what's happening. So in 2018, we, of course, had the Josh Allen rushing explosion, if you remember, where he was he was putting up like a hundo and a rushing touchdown every single week. And Lamar Jackson also uh, turned into a starter and ended up as a, as a fine fantasy player. 2019 was incredibly fun. Because you had Ryan Tannehill go from uh, escaping Adam Gaze, a new team. He ends up taking over for the Titans and then works his way into fantasy glory and a big bag of money on top of that. And we also had Ryan Fitzpatrick. If you guys remember second half Ryan Fitzpatrick of 2019, it was freaking awesome. And then last year, Cousins and Derek Carr. So we're, what we're looking for here is... Room for positive touchdown regression. They're underperforming there, which for things like the the league average, you know, we 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 talk about this number on the show. It's about four and a half percent or so. It, it fluctuates from year to year, but four and a half percent of your attempts turn into touchdowns. They have a, an untapped rushing upside, like Josh Allen, and of course, rookies get a bump because they get experience and they just play better over the second half of the year. And after running all of those variables, and here's the thing about second half guys, like in 20, let's just go to the last year. In 2020, if you had said, guys, Kirk Cousins, who is the quarterback 23 over the first half, he's about to get in a rocket ship and go to just fantasy glory and finish as the quarterback three over the second half, you go, you sound stupid. Like, yeah. You sound so that's like, the goal here. How dare you? infer that Kirk Cousins is going to be dominant over the second half. But that's what you got to look for. So Daniel Jones has the fourth easiest. You sound stupid. Exactly. He's got the fourth easiest quarterback strength of schedule. He is surrounded by weapons. And they have we have not seen a fully healthy arsenal of New York Giants wide receivers from Shepard, Galladay, Tony, and Slayton. And Barkley. Like, and Saquon Barkley. Like, it's crazy how much talent Daniel Jones is surrounded by, and yet it never has. He still has never fully been surrounded by that. He has the the positive regression that could happen for his touchdown rate, and he runs. We know that these things are true for Daniel Jones, so he's an interesting guy to watch. Yeah, he had the same touchdown rate last year, though. I, I know, I know, but that these that's why we're giving these names. They sound stupid until they're not, and of course, Trevor Lawrence. His schedule is. It does open up pretty wide, aside from his championship week against the Patriots on the road. Got to get to the championship, but week. but like his schedule is easy, and he 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 fits into the mold that we were talking about. So he might be interesting, uh, a player What's to watch. What's his touchdown rate so far this year? Oh, I have it two two point seven. Yeah, and that's well under the league average. So that like he doesn't need to be Herculean. He just needs to be average in the touchdown department. All of a sudden, Trevor Lawrence is far more interesting. At the running back position, we're looking. You, this is these are the variables we're looking for. Young players, the majority of the second half breakout candidates, they're first or second year players. Every once in a while, you get an old guy like Colonel Mustard or the Yeti, but those are like last year. Those are fringe cases. Go Jonathan ahead. Taylor, David Montgomery, J.K. Dobbins. J.D. McKissick. Yeah, so he was the old man. Huge leaps in the second half for those players. Yeah, J.D. McKissick was the one older veteran who who came through, but, you know, Alex Smith took care of that. 
But you want to look for so a young player, nice schedule. Like Mon Monty had a such yes, a nice schedule him last year. And Jonathan Taylor. Yep. Where the opportunity was there and they took advantage. We need room again for positive touchdown regression. And uh, like, will the backfield can it clear up? And we've been talking about it for a while, but you got to mention it again because Javante Williams, it could just stay status quo. It, like Melvin Gordon can be in this category too. Like if Javante Williams misses time, the schedule for the Denver Broncos running backs is so ridiculously juicy. They have literally one bottom half matchup from now through championship week, and that's week 13 against the Kansas City Chiefs. So both of those guys have a huge opportunity here <clears throat> to turn into a – to give you that second-half league-winning performance. And guess who's oh, back? Oh, baby. I, I, I'm Back again. I've been waiting. David Montgomery. He's the third easiest strength of schedule for the way that we gauge these things where he has a tough matchup in Week 30, 13 against Arizona. Green Bay is – Middle of the pack. Middle They're of the fine. pack, but everything else is just green lights for David Montgomery, who returned right to the uh, the workload. But other players, you know, Elijah Mitchell and Michael Carter, they are the they they fit young player. Positive touchdown regression could come, and the backfield could clear up. So those are names that we want to keep in mind uh, for for second half breakouts here for the running back position. It's delightful when you find one of these guys you never oh, man. ever forget when you hit on one of these players they they go into your hall of fame they can do like for me you you hung a uh you hung a poster up once yes of, so of one of your heroes like i don't know if you guys have names that immediately come to mind but for me robert griffin uh was he was pretty good all year but i mean he helped carry me and jeremy hill well if you've oh, listened yeah. if you've listened to this show since the beginning Jeremy Hill was someone that I was just so convicted in in the draft process. I, I drafted him everywhere. I sat on him for nine weeks of nothingness. And then he just he fit the bill. Giovanni Bernard. Was that on, the year he eliminated me from the playoffs? Yes. He, eliminated, we were facing each he other? eliminated everybody from the playoffs because he went <sighs> just full Hamburglar over the second half. Tim Hightower was my guy. Oh yeah, for the uh, the Saints the year. The Saints year when he uh, he was that waiver wire pickup that went ham at the end, got me a championship. You never forget those guys. Yeah. So yeah, David Montgomery, uh, Javante Williams, Elijah Miss Missile, go go trade for them. All right, get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working, just like this segment with Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at Walmart.com. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Oh, brother. That's yep. right. Never leave. Never leave. We didn't even need to change the graphics. I mean, uh, he is meeting with the he being Cam Newton is meeting with the Carolina Panthers today. And um, I, I mean, recent. Recent buzz is that this is, you know, Ian Rappaport says this is a legit possibility that he signs with them. Uh, Sam Darnold is going to be out a while. It and makes complete sense from uh, the the standpoint, not not the, of working with Matt Rule, but comfortable in the city, comfortable with DJ Moore. Half a game out of first pl or yeah, uh, playoff you're, you're spot. In, you're in contention, and if you're looking at like, well, we don't, really think that P.J. Walker can carry us into the playoffs while we miss Sam Darnold for four to six weeks. Like, I mean, Sam Darnold, it, and he could be out even longer. You you just, you, you're not 100% sure. So this makes complete and total sense, and Cam Newton be, immediately becomes interesting yeah, for fantasy. Yeah, Cam Newton will be able to run the ball. He will be interesting for fantasy. I don't know that he really lifts up the wide receiver core, I know we feel like anything and everything is an upgrade to Sam Darnold, and, and pretty much that's true, but the last time we saw Cam Newton, he wasn't that great either. But these veterans who are past their prime and even bad can still get the job done. Look at Ben Roethlisberger, right? He's terrible, but Deontay is mm -hmm. solid. Um, you know, obviously, if you're dumbing it off to Najee, that's great, and the youth is youth. So um, I, I'm, I'm excited. I hope Cam signs... Um, do, does that change your outlook on DJ Moore, up or down? Changes my confidence in McCaffrey's weekly success. That too, yes. Um, DJ Moore, up or down? Not really. Neutral? I mean, yeah, pretty neutral. 
Uh, Cam, he throws it few and far between. He did in New England, at least, you know. But he he showed that you can – with him, you can win a game dirty. Oh, with yeah. With a solid yep. defense and a play here or there, first downs, him running. And he's already thrown the ball 10,000 times Christian McCaffrey in a season. I guess the occasional goal line sneak may hurt McCaffrey. But – um. So that's happening. Mm -hmm. We also have a report that Beckham is going to take some time, Odell Beckham Jr., a few days away to pick his new team. Seems like he won't play this week. Yeah, it's very selfish. <laughs> I mean, this is you know changing his entire life, but we are impatient, and I feel like he should do it immediately. Yeah, you feel hurt. Right, personally. Yeah. Alvin Kamara dealing with a mild knee sprain. Didn't practice on Wednesday. Um, you know, I was looking at total touches per game. I mean, he's averaging over 22 touches per game. This is – you know, Henry's gone, so he's basically tied for first in total touches, and here you are with a, a knee sprain. This is why you went out and traded for Mark Ingram if you're the Saints, and uh, we don't know what this weekend's going to be like for Kamara, but it seems – I guess it seems like good news that this is considered a mild knee sprain as opposed to something uh, more definitive. Yeah, he's at, – at the least, he will probably seed more work this weekend to Mark Ingram, at worst, he'll be out. Godwin, Allen, Keenan Allen, that is, did not practice on Wednesday. Uh, we'll see and monitor their situations. The, the Chris Godwin is one that you need to look at just a little bit more closely because they're coming off of a bye week. where And when a player misses after a week, full week of rest, that's concerning. And they signed Brashad Perriman to yes. the practice squad. So there's been some transactions to say there, there is potential for worry. Yeah, was that more Antonio Brown related, though? Do we know? Well, I think they've been expecting to be without Antonio Brown for a long, long time. So um, I thought I, they it, it expected could, him to play after the bye. Um, they thought I think it was we, possible. I think we expected him to play. But remember, Bruce Arians came out and said, right when the injury first happened, he might be gone for a while. Okay, James Robinson didn't practice Wednesday. Uh, earlier in the week, Urban Meyer said he expected him back. We'll be monitoring Thursday, Friday practice reports, let you know if he'll be back out there which is pretty important for a lot of fantasy teams. Mm -hmm. Claypool is mm -hmm. going to miss some time. Uh, not season ending. It's a toe injury. Week to week is the way they're talking about it. Clyde Edwards-Alaire designated for return from injured reserve. Same with Chris Carson. Both were limited on practices on Wednesday. So they have 21 days to be activated. It's not a guarantee that they will play this week. They could uh, both or either. Uh, so you'll just have to monitor as we get closer to the end of the week. If they are active, um, are you playing them? Carson, yeah. I mean, it's probably a yes for both. And uh, what else do we have? Dawson Knox returned to practice in a limited fashion. Could be getting him back soon, hopefully this week. Logan Thomas, this is not good. His ham injured no. hamstring felt sore coming out of Monday's workout. So are you more pessimistic about his return at this yeah, point? Yeah, sore is not injured, which is good. I mean, people are sore after working out, uh, so it could be okay. But it's just like Mike said, when you're coming off a bye, this is far more than that. He has mm -hmm. an injured hamstring that he rested for a month. And if he's, you know, if, if all of a sudden after he gets back out there for the first time, he's feeling it, uh, we saw this with Curtis Samuel. And Curtis Samuel has not been playing football. So... It's not a not a great sign. Jamal Williams didn't practice on a Wednesday. Noah yeah. Fant was activated from the reserve COVID list, which uh, Albert O could miss. So you're right back into Noah Fant being interesting. Yeah, and the, it's a good matchup. Who do they play? Uh, great matchup. It, I it, can't remember off the top Eagles. of my head. Thank you. But I was yeah, looking Eagles at are uh, – I just saw this this morning. They're giving up – the completion percentage for quarterbacks facing the Eagles is 75.5%. <laughs> Oh, that is the oh. best in all of football. So if you're looking, I mean, Bridgewater was brought up as a streaming candidate. Yeah. Uh, that's why. We also had another piece of news that broke yesterday. Uh, we got to the bottom. Donald Parham. Oh, very important. For the Chargers. It is not Parham. He came out and he set the record straight, which is greatly. Thank you. That is greatly appreciated. I want to. So Parham. Did that, he do that because we brought it up? I think it has probably. to be. We're, I think we're it, very influential. Well, I mean, the timing is just impossible. <laughs> we ask the question and then the player tweets it out. So Donald, thank you. Uh, Thanks for listening, Mr. Parham. Yes. You are now one of our favorites. And we did say that regardless of what you said, we were going to go with Parham. <laughs> Maybe that's why he came out. Maybe it was Parham, and he's like, well, the footballer said 
no matter what, it's Parham. So at everybody, it's Parham. That's probably what happened. Latavius Murray didn't practice. He's doubtful for tonight's game. He's not going to play. No. Uh, Sammy Watkins, full participant, expected to play barring a pregame setback. He kind of had a pregame setback last week. It was mm-hmm. not feeling so good, sat him out again. It's it's interesting because he's, he's has, fragile. In in his games that he's played, he's had over a 20% market share. I was listening uh, on the drive-in to um, someone from the Ravens camp talking about this situation, saying they're not – he's not even sure yet – in in 12 personnel whether it'll be sammy or whether it'll you know hollywood is the one mm-hmm. um and then he's not sure when it comes to bateman who's looked great and sammy watkins who's been involved who will be that too so it will be interesting to watch tonight to just see if sammy's snap counts has an effect on rashad bateman or if bateman is the two that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. You can download the Sleeper app, join the Breaking Alerts channel faster than every other source. We're going to jump into the matchups. A lot to break down for week 10. Before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsors for supporting the podcast. And that starts with Ritual. Uh, here, here's the facts, gentlemen. We deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and sure. why, especially when it comes to something we take every day like a multivitamin. And Ritual, uh, they produce clean, vegan-friendly multivitamins, high-quality nutrients, bioavailable forms that your body can actually use. No sugars, no GMOs, no allergens, no synthetic fillers, no artificial colorants. I've seen some studies lately about the benefits of multivitamins, actually, uh, in recent days. So you kind of want one that's natural. And um, they have a fresh taste, kind of like a... A minty oh, it's, after. Yes, it is. It is <laughs> delightful. Yeah, no egg burps here. Uh, no. And uh, so the rituals providing multivitamins reimagined. They're made traceable. They're designed with your life stage in mind. So you're talking about vitamins from women, men, teens, uh, specifically formulated for them. You get key nutrients without the BS. Oh, and you don't. You don't need. Take it easy. I don't need BS in my multivitamins. This is a family show. Ritual's offering our listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash footballers to start your ritual today. And we want to thank Embark, a new sponsor, one I'm excited about. I just got a new puppy. I got a new puppy, and Embark Vet offers dog DNA tests that will help me better care for them. Um, it's, It's pretty cool. Embark is the only dog DNA test provider that supplies dog owners with the knowledge to understand our furry friends, and we can take actionable steps to help improve the life and the longevity of the dog. 37% of embarkers take an action to improve their dog's care after the test with Embark. If you want them to live their best, happiest, longest life, you need to know about your your dog. You need to know about your breed. They detect over 350 breeds, types, and varieties, screening for over 210 genetic health risks, so you can help your vet provide the best medical care for your dog. We are a dog show. We that love right. we love our dogs. I have 3 dogs and a new puppy and we want to take care of our pets. We want to be the best pet owners we can and Embark is there to help and you can gift them as well this holiday season. Understand your dog better with Embark, the highest rated dog DNA test. Right now Embark has a limited time offer on their breed and health kit and purebred kit for our listeners. Go to embarkvet.com to get free shipping and save $64 off with the promo code FOOTBALLERS. Visit EmbarkVet.com and use promo code FOOTBALLERS to save $64 and get the perfect gift for a happy, healthy holiday. Fantasy Forecast. I saw that graphic come up. If you're watching on YouTube, we have a matchup animation that comes up when I hit that drop. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Oh, nice plug. And <laughs> I hear Brooks laughing in the background. <laughs> he likes a good plug. <laughs> Brooks loves a good plug. Uh, not a hair plug, though. Uh, oh, but but George oh, oh. Kittle is a part of that animation. And it's nice to, that he's back into the, the fantasy is. relevance, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. We've, we've had to wait a long time, but the matchup is good. He was great last week. And thanks for being back. Thanks, George. Appreciate you. Yes. All right. We talked about the Thursday night game on yesterday's show. So if you're like, hey, where's that game? That's where it is. There is a chance for rain 
tonight. Little oh, little bit rain. Little little bit rain? Yes. <laughs> not a lot of bit? Nope, not a lot of bit. It was sunny mm. this morning, but they said the weather forecast could could rain a bit. Could do a little, little bit. A <laughs> little bit rain. All right, the Atlanta Falcons at 4-4, four and four, playoff bound. Take on the 6-2 and two Dallas Cowboys, who just got their butts handed to them at home by the Broncos. DraftKings Sportsbook line, don't care. Cowboys, minus 8 at home. The over-under is 54 and a half. Oh, darn it. Why well, you round up? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> This is our show. We do what we, we do want. What we want. Par ham. Uh, last week, the Dallas offense, it was a disaster. Now, you did have the recovery for Dak managers in the last four minutes salvaging the day. He really was fine for fantasy because mm -hmm. of – Two meaningless, stupid drives against me, <laughs> and um, let's talk about let's talk about these Falcons for a moment because it, it was it was kind of I don't think we expected them to be competing at the level that they're competing. Right? You lose Correct. Julio Jones. You have Calvin Ridley is essentially out right uh, for maybe the whole season. Matt Ryan looked like trash to open the year. You know what I mean? Like he, yes, he absolutely. Was, he looked like it was. It was over. It was done. He is aged out, and he doesn't have the weapons uh, the first three weeks of the season, and, and he's looked great over the last month. But little did we know, and, and, and Mike Davis has been a complete and absolute waste of mm -hmm. a, a free agent signing, not producing, and here you have Cordero Patterson. And Cordero is number two in the NFL at the running back position in, in yards per touch behind Jonathan Taylor. So he has been an effective weapon. That's six point six, I believe, per touch. Six point six yards. It has been an unbelievable season for Patterson. And it has been an unbelievably consistent one. You put him in your lineup, you get double digits, you maybe get something special, but you at least get double digits. Since week two, there are only two running backs in the NFL who've been top twenty four every single week. It's Najee Harris and Cordero Patterson. So you don't look at him anymore through the lens, at least I don't, of sell high. Um, cash in. No. This is just Mr. Necessary in all phases of the game, the receiving game, the running game. Matt Ryan looked great last week, one of the highest-rated passers over the last few weeks. He was the quarterback three in fantasy. And then he spread the ball around. You know, you had uh, Zacchaeus with a couple of touchdowns. Russell Gage got back involved. You know, Kyle Pitts, since the bye week, he's like 14.9 yards per target down the field like he is breakout worthy every week so you have a fantasy relevant falcons is my point here yeah, yeah. that's fun now when you say you have fantasy relevant falcons there certainly will be points put up but as far as reliability i i still think it's only two players it's cordero and pitts i don't know that i'm putting russell gage in a lineup or zacchaeus or um zacchaeus. tajay sharp I, I i just don't i don't think i can trust them even if one of them is predictably going to have a decent game. Gage and Tajay flip-flopped back uh, the the other direction this time where Tajay had the game two weeks ago. Gage was a goose. Uh, Let, let's help people then. This if week, you're, if you're Gage, flexing one of them, oh pick gosh. the name to flex. For me, it's, it's Russell Gage. It's okay. an easy Russell Gage because of history. You're going to have good weeks and bad weeks, but Russell's been there for you know years with Matt Ryan. Fair? Yeah, I lean that way too. All right, uh, Dak on the other side gets to redeem the offense this week and gets the privilege of doing it against the Falcons defense, 28th in the league against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. They're also 25th against running backs. This game has a 55 or 54.5 over under for a reason, right? We're expecting this game to be high flying and good for fantasy. So Zeke, Dak, Cooper, Lamb, yeah, I think and Dalton Schultz, I think. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. you fire them all up. I, I, the expectation is good game for the the Cowboys offense, and and you leave it there. That being said, I I will say that I would be lying if there was not a worry in the back of my mind over Dak's calf because when you watched that game, Dak looked off, just looked terrible. Oh. It, it it yes looked awful, and uh, it creeps in my mind of is the calf injury affecting him you know is that the reason why he looked bad now obviously for fantasy he finished the game fine when the defense stopped playing um but I just I, like I was building my DFS lineup for tomorrow's show and I wanted to put Dak in there because of this matchup and I was like eh, I'm a little afraid of the calf and I and I pivoted um so 
any wor- any worries from you guys or just? Uh, well, he basically got a week of rest last week out there on the field. Three and out, three and out, three and out. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, uh, not a huge worry. And then to, to speak to Michael Gallup, who is not – he's not activated just yet, but the expectation is he will play. Uh, I th- I think Gallup should be stashed to at least see what is – what's going to happen. Week one, We haven't seen him since week one where he played 60% of the snaps, but he did see – 12% of the targets in that time. So it, we don't know what the game plan will be. We know that Michael Gallup is a talented wide receiver, and this is a high-powered offense. So I don't, think that he should be on the back of your bench. And I would not roster him. I, okay. I would disagree just because last year he played 88% of the snaps. Okay, He was super involved in this offense. You had three start. I'll give him four. Four startable games last year on the course of the whole season, and everything else was pretty much worthless. So that was with a rookie C.D. Lamb, uh, full healthy season. I just don't know. He, he's not he the could, kind of player I want on my fantasy team. Yeah, he could okay. certainly from come a, from a, uh, a what do you call that? Like a consistency. Yeah, I mean reliability. Like, archetype. Archetype. That's what I. That was next out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, and that's that goes for players like Van Jefferson too. We're like obviously Gallup can give you a good week. Van Jefferson can give you a good week. But I'm looking at players on my bench at the wide receiver position as don't give me a bad week. And both those players can give me a bad week. I'd rather have a, uh, a Hunter Renfro as an emergency start just because of target volume, but that's yeah. just pre- personal preference. Certainly is talented. Yeah. Certainly is a good yeah, no offense. Doubt. So I, I see both sides. That's what I'm saying of the like of the targets where 12 percent of the targets in just about half of the game. We we don't you you don't know for sure if they were all of a sudden like hey yeah we're gonna put Gallup in he's a focal point of the game plan now. It could happen and just uh, you don't want Tuesday to roll around. And you're like, ah, oh, crap! Now I got to burn. If fab. you're flexing Dalton Schultz or Michael Gallup this week, still Dalton Schultz. To okay. it, and that he's the other name of like, does Michael Gallup come in here and steal targets away from Schultz? I believe Cedric Wilson did not practice, so there, there is the you know he's another name in the mix. But if he doesn't play, well, that would be helpful. If Gallup is back, Wilson is out. Uh, the New Orleans Saints at five and three take on the seven and two Tennessee Titans. Wow. Who started 0 and 1, getting thrashed at home? Yes. So they've run off a 7 1 record. They've lost Derrick Henry, and it didn't matter. And they look great. And their defense, their you know, defense. I mean, it's double been digits a- in four or five weeks for fantasy purposes. And they play the Saints with some combination of Simeon and Hill. I, did the Saints score in the first half last week? I mean, Camara could be limited. Tennessee's at home. Yeah. Like, starting with the defense here, isn't Tennessee a strong play? Yes. yes. Tennessee is a strong play. It's one of those things where I we look at the Tennessee defense and we don't like them because they have been terrible in the secondary. They've given up big plays, a lot of fantasy points, but as a scoring, sacking, turnovering defense, they've been great. And this has been against the Rams, the Colts, the Bills, and the Chiefs. That's like – those are – those are great offenses. Three of the four of those weeks have been three of the five best offenses in the NFL. So, yeah, you've got to give major uh, kudos to uh, the the defense special teams for the Titans. So, from a an offensive standpoint, by the way, the Titans are two-and-a-half-point home favorites over under 44. That's not high. Ryan Tannehill – is interesting in this matchup. The the one area the Saints are very vulnerable is to the opposing wide receivers, and you have a couple of great ones on Tennessee. You know, the Saints are a great rushing defense. They're even better when Adrian Peterson's lined up against them. So it's going to come – like their success is going to come through the passing game. But at the same time, you know, much like uh, the Vikings competing last week, the Saints, when they lose a ball game, they so often come back – and surprise you with the resilience and you know the over under is very low i just don't know if they're going to give up enough me personally to have confidence starting Tannehill, um or julio who i know you guys both like this week yeah but i'm i'm playing them both i'm taking a look here just an interesting thing here of, of let's see if this trend continues uh but you know how so the new orleans saints their game plan for the was clear when Jameis Winston was the guy it was limit how much he throws the ball defense running and in the last 
couple weeks, man. They're, they threw the 11th most pass attempts against Tampa Bay. Now, it's Tampa Bay, and Jameis Winston was in for part of that game. And the 10th most passes against Atlanta. I mean, maybe that was that's just a, a fluke thing where they had to keep up because their their game plan didn't work. But that's a that's interesting to keep an eye on here for how the who is who has fantasy relevance moving forward. Like the the Saints wide receivers could go from they're just no, you're not even thinking about it. To okay, maybe I'll flex one of these guys. Yeah, I have interest in the Saints wide receivers this week, and I guess this game is going to be my. Andy's almost upset of the week. I think the Saints can get it done on the road in this one okay. against the Titans, who are not going to be able to establish the running game against them. So uh, we'll be on watch for Alvin Kamara. Adrian Peterson, look, if you're picking one of the running backs, that's who I'm playing. I would, I would agree with that because the only hope here is not yardage against the Saints. Yeah, the fair. hope is a touchdown, and he will presumably be the first up at the goal line. Yeah, he, he will. I I definitely agree with that. Uh, I still think if, if a negative game script turns out for the Titans, it will go to McNichols. He had the most snaps. He ran the most routes uh, at the, for the running back position. But this thing could – like Deontay Foreman's play could make this thing a complete disaster because of, of the running backs on the ground, Foreman looks the best, and he's the one who received the fewest amount of uh, – touches foreman is the uh the tyson williams probably of this backfield where could be or maybe the uh the process over the results is who they go with i you're right it's a it's a mess mm -hmm. and the saints aren't the team to figure the mess out against neither were the rams to be honest i mean these are two brutal matchups after you lose henry henry wasn't going to be i mean you always would have started him of course but these were two games that you would have been concerned about it looks like trevor simeon is going to be the starter for the Saints. And, you know, you listen to Sean Payton. He talks about he thought he played pretty well overall. That was his feedback on him. But your work Taysom Hill in. You could see a transition mid-game if they're not having success. Really, I like I like him being the quarterback for the upside of Callaway and Deontay Harris. If you need spot starts at the wide receiver position, nobody's giving up more points to the opposing fantasy wide receivers than the Tennessee Titans at 38 a game. So... I like Callaway more than Harris, but I like both. And Ingram is a good start as well. Yeah, I I, I have a hard time playing the roulette on the, the Saints uh, wide receiver core. Obviously, the matchup is good, but the matchup's good on both sides of the ball here. The, 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 the secondaries of both teams aren't that great. They You know, you talk about 38 points a game to the Titans, 34 uh, points a game for the Saints defense given up to wide receivers as well. So there, there could certainly be fantasy – relevance uh at the wide receiver position yeah and this is the time of year too where like those numbers those season-long numbers sometimes betray the trends that we just talked about the titans defense you know it wasn't great for cooper cup you know you know it wasn't great for uh robert woods in terms of well, their upside such a weird game but i mean that's week nine it was the twilight zone for everybody jacksonville at two and six takes on the indianapolis colts at four and five the colts either win or they lose my last second field goal isn't that their <laughs> I, thought, I wasn't sure where that statement was going was, yes either they will win or they will lose no ties they this could year. die DraftKings Sportsbook line Colts minus 10 how dare they after the Jags knocked off the Bills over under is 47 and a half in this one isn't this the resurgence the Urban Meyer breakout campaign aren't we on, oh, on the way oh no no we're not no doubtful um, I do think we brought this up. Uh, if you're streaming a quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, I think is a uh, fine play. Um, the Colts are 30th against quarterbacks. They've given up a lot of good performances. Uh, you, Mike, you brought up in the never not working. The fact that you're looking for uh, a younger guy who has not thrown a lot of touchdowns, who can also run the ball. Those things fit Trevor uh, Lawrence. Well, he's not going to throw a lot of touchdowns if he doesn't throw the ball to Marvin Jones. Agreed. That that's part of the equation here. And look, man, Marvin Jones is just—he's no Jamal Agnew. I've I've said it time and time again. Yeah, different name. That that when Jamal Agnew's on the field, he demands demands targets. I think it's a good game for Marvin. <laughs> I think Marvin's going to have one of. The, he's always been a player that you have. 
that you often accidentally have on your bench during the breakouts and then you put him in and he has a bad game. I wouldn't make that mistake this week. This is a, a matchup where negative game script, 10 point underdogs, garbage time should be able to supply some value. A couple deep shots against a Colts defense that gives up some big plays uh, on the back end. And Marvin Jones is a good receiver. So I think this is a Marvin week. Um, if I'm looking at IU versus Marvin, I'm playing Marvin. I know Jason, you, I think you answered that earlier in the week. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do like Marvin. I think he's a fine, a fine start this week. Fine man. Fine. A man. fine man. That Marvin, uh, Dan Arnold. Yeah. Get heck him in there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, we got a heck yeah. Heck yeah, man. He, oh yeah. yeah. We'll be talking about Dan Arnold later in the show. Oh, why? He's no, my I'm start of the week. <laughs> Spoiler. I mean, his, his target share has it's been great. outrageous, man. Yeah. Like the last two weeks, 26%, 20%. Since going to, to Jacksonville, he's seeing a, a, right about 20% of well, all the targets. Help it's me, ridiculous. Help me make a decision, guys. All okay, right. Okay, I, okay. I've got uh, my dynasty team. It's awesome. You know, seven and two. You sure. guys are in that league. Um, I've got to make a, a tight end decision this week. i got to go Dan Arnold. Or I gotta go Zach Ertz against Carolina. Ooh, that's a Dan Arnold for me. Are you going Dan? Dan the man? You don't even know who the quarterback is for the Cardinals yet. <sighs> I'd play Dan Arnold. Okay, I just made the switch. Thanks, right, guys. Right. Congratulations. Appreciate you. Uh, Carson Wait, Wentz. Are you playing against me? Uh, uh, nope. Okay, yeah. Stick with Dan Arnold. <laughs> I like it. Uh, nice. Carson Wentz is was Mike's stream of the week. He's yep. been on fire. In fact, the Colts are uh, have been exceeding their implied team total from Vegas since week four. They're averaging 31.5 points per game. Wow. He is re they're really moving the offense. If you pull up your matchup and on the other side is Jonathan Taylor this week, I am very sorry. <laughs> I am sorry for the luck. That's how I felt about Josh Allen last week. That was the mm -hmm. only oh, thing. Yeah. That is that. I mean, yeah, no, but no, Jonathan Taylor is going to – he's going to mash. <laughs> I mean, this is an early Thanksgiving feast yes. for Jonathan Taylor and, of course, at the wide receiver position. Oh, yeah. We built this city. Pity city. The mayor may have an announcement later on in this show. I mean, I feel like maybe you've locked him into, like, start of the week every week for the rest of the year. Start of the year. Yeah, but sometimes the matchup dictates that we highlight a player even more. T.Y. Hilton could be back this week. Obviously, it's don't a, care. It's a good match. No, not. I'm not saying it's going to oh, hurt oh, Pittman. Okay, okay. I'm just saying if okay. you're if you're a team scoring 31 points a game, and he does come back into a role as yes. the one B or two two B, I don't know. He could have some or not to be. Yeah, he came back. Oh, okay. <laughs> came. All right. You know what? <laughs> oh, the cards. Oh, are the cards out. are coming out. Let's see the rating here for Mike's joke. Oh, oh he got, got a nine. nine. That is as that is as high as it goes on those cards. Um, yeah, T. Y. Hilton came back uh, from his previous injury, had eighty yards, was relevant. Yes, eighty in uh, a concussion. A, well, yeah. no, the concussion. Oh, the, did it come that? It week? was the next week. Yeah, yeah, the next game. Um, unfortunately, that was against Houston. This one is not. So I would not start T. Y. Hilton. I would start he T. Y. Did, Houston. T. Y. Houston did it again, man. This is impossible. when does he play Houston again? Uh, can we oh, can we map this out? Yeah, week uh, thirteen. Oh, okay. That could Heal be helpful. Up. Heal up. Uh, Brooks, can you put on our show doc notes for week 12 <laughs> waivers? Uh, T.Y. Hilton, please. Cleveland at 5-4, and four, taking on the 5-4 and four New England Patriots in New England. DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Patriots minus 2.5. The over-under is 45.5. And, a half, and um, New England is currently in the playoffs. We've got Billy, Billy B. back in the playoffs. The defense is doing their thing. Yeah, and they've made, they've been getting better each and every week. They really have. They've made they've made plays, and you're looking at a. This is not the ideal situation you want for Cleveland. You're going into a difficult environment. Um, low over under. You you have you know Jarvis Landry didn't practice. He's been banged up. Like he's been in and out of games. You have obviously no Beckham anymore. Nick Chubb is on the reserve COVID list. Um, I don't like the situation here for anybody on Cleveland. I don't know if Baker can get it done on the road in this matchup with the weapons that he has, and it's going to be a tough one for DeErnest, in my in my opinion. A hundred percent. The the Patriots defense has been very, very solid. Nobody's really torching them. No position is a great play against 
the Patriots. They're top 10 against quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight end. Uh, I would say if there is one play, obviously it would be the running game for the Browns. Mm -hmm. If Chubb plays, you play him. If Chubb doesn't play, you're still going to play Dearness Johnson. He's going to be high enough uh, to me to where he's pretty much almost locked in a start. I don't think he does what he did in his last start and just, you know, he's a top three running back on the week. But that would be the one play. Um, Seven interceptions by this defense in the last three weeks. Yeah, they've they've been great. I have talked up Donovan Peoples Jones uh, recently. I've acquired him and played him, and I will be benching him in this matchup. He's a good wide receiver. It could happen, but I I trust the Patriots defense more than I trust Donovan Peoples Choice Award. And are, are any of you picking the Browns to upset the Patriots in New England? Not I. Um, I am not. Yeah, I it, I don't think it's a, I think it's much closer than you guys do. Uh, and what I about think, by like two like about a two and a half point game? Man, that it's that's a, it's a really tough line to call. Uh, but I do. It, 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 I'm expecting Nick Chubb to be out, and I think that Dearness Johnson is is a fine play. Like when he this the strength of Cleveland is the running game, like the scheme. It and Dearness Johnson, he's proven to be. A good player. It wasn't just the the game against the Denver Broncos, who are a fine uh, rush defense in their own right. Like we've seen it now over the course of of last year and this year, when Johnson gets an opportunity, he can come through and he should see a crap ton of volume because uh, everybody everybody's out right now well, for the Cleveland Browns at the running back position. They have given up quite a few points in recent weeks to the running back position. Yeah, that I, I think, I, and that's the strength of the Browns. And I will say the one thing, you know, I say I'm on the Patriots side, the one thing that is kind of wacky, I don't know that it's sticky enough to matter, but it is true and pretty wild that the Patriots, they have been crap at home and awesome. They haven't lost the road game this year, and the only home game they won this season was the Jets. So it's just so weird. Um, again, small sample probably doesn't matter, but uh, they if if they were to lose another one at home, it'd just be kind of wild. Uh, Jacoby Myers has I think forty six receptions without a touchdown this year. We can do so more. He's, he's on fire in uh, the wrong way. It's a, it's almost like a joke. Yeah, and I I know that I mean they are well aware of it. They celebrated when he caught the touchdown that yeah. that the the touchdown that wasn't. Um, so they're going to try to get him the ball there, but I'm going to predict it's not happening this week. Damien Harrison and Ramondre Stevenson are both in the concussion protocol. Brooks, do we have anything new on either of them progressing through that protocol this week? Not right now. So we'll be watching, monitoring. Uh, don't know if either guy is going to get back. I, I guess we need a flow chart here. <laughs> of the protocol? Yeah, we, no, we need a flow chart of if – so if, if Damien Harris is in, let's say, okay, let's say everybody clears – yeah, if Harris is in, Harris is in your lineup. Agreed. And if, now, if Stevenson is back from the protocol, he's not in your lineup. If Stevenson is back from the protocol and, and Damian Harris is, is out, out, then I would be willing to start Ramondre Stevenson. And if then, he's active. And then right. If, <laughs> yes, that is. Which is a thing you have to say he with could him. could clear protocol and be inactive, in which case I do not start but him. But then so, you yeah, would the, start Brandon Bolden if both are out. That's right. The flow chart matters <laughs> that's here. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and then, obviously, J.J. Taylor would end up with the big game. In all these situations, J.J. Taylor will have four to five That's touchdowns. Right. Make sure that you get those points on your bench. Um, but are you starting other options here? I mean, Jacoby Myers has kind of slowed down in recent weeks. Kendrick Bourne has a game here. Then Aguilar. I mean, Hunter Henry can be in your lineup, right? Uh, I think or you, have, you have to mark? believe he can be in your lineup. He's been um, over, you know, since week four. There's one game where he has not been a – Tight end one. So, yeah, you can start him. I mean, it's all <laughs> it's, touchdowns. It's all touchdowns. The last month, two two receptions, uh, one touchdown. Two receptions, one touchdown. One reception, no touchdowns, and he was the tight end 27. I think, I think there's a, a decent chance that zero players from this game end up in the top 24 at their positions. I would agree with all of that except for whoever the starting running back is for the Browns. The Buffalo Bills at 5-3 and three get to, um, I don't know, Reckon with their demons against the New York Jets in New York, who are two and six. Yeah, but unfortunately for the Buffalo Bills, he's back, baby. Mike White is gonna play this game. Look out! Yeah, Colt Colt Classics meet a sad demise in this game. The Bills are eleven. Tell point, that to Urban Meyer. Eleven point road 
favorites. Weren't they that? Weren't they more? Were they have, uh, heavier favorites last week? Yes, they were. Over under is forty seven and a half. I have consistently tweeted. I will take the under. Tweeted Mike White, greater sign Mike Wright in recent weeks. Yeah. I did not realize you look identical to him. Yeah, but I, I mean to tell you, it hurts. That hurts my feelings. Well, that every is, time I tweet that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, but it's, I mean, uh, look, it's the truth. You've seen facts over feelings. Yeah. yeah, Mike White is awesome. Now here, here's I the wish thing. I was Mike White. Here's the thing. I think if there is something to pay attention to from last week, okay, there's they lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you want to just say, okay, throw that game in the garbage. It doesn't matter. And I would usually say that. If not for the week prior against the Miami Dolphins, where for half, at least, at least half, half maybe two thirds of that game, the Dolphins were shutting out the Bills' offense. Um, and, then, and then the Bills came through and did what they need to do. Um, so the two big takeaways here are one, even though they lost the game, their defense was outstanding. That's what I was going to say. I mean, their defense I mean, is unbelievable. The Jets aren't doing anything against the Bills. They're number one across the board. They're number one against quarterbacks, number one against running backs, number one against wide receivers. You're, I'm not. I'm, I'm not, not playing a Jet other than an emergency kind of like Michael Carter flex. Sure, That's or an, an emergency PPR league, Jamison Crowder, maybe. Uh, I, no, stay away from the Jets. Um, I think that the Bills get right in this game on offense, but I am a little bit worried because it's they two weeks stretch. They get white in this offense. That, well, uh, you know, oh. defense. Mm. Um, so, I mean, you're not going to not start them, though. Josh Allen's going to be started. Uh, at last I have heard, Zach Moss has not practiced, is in the concussion protocol. If he does not get into practice today, it is more, you know, it, it is trending towards him missing um, Sunday. That is not a guarantee with concussions. I need, I need you guys' help. Okay. I need you to, you know, we're halfway through the year. I need you to tell me how you're valuing Stephon Diggs in trades on both sides, trading away, trading for, because I've had discussions with people about Stephon Diggs, and, you know, this is a player that was in, an elite option at the wide receiver position last year. He has been fine, but he's been the number 22 receiver so far this year. And last year he was the number three overall. So, you know, the catch percentage is down. Last year was a very special year. But do, how do you look at him rest of season? Do you look at him as a top 12 yes. bona fide stud in your, in your mind? I view him as a top 12 bona fide stud. I do not necessarily view him as one of those top three guys. You know, he's not in the tier with the Adams and the Hill. You know, the, but he is, to me, a top 12 uh, guy. His utilization has been great. Um, the offense is still very good, so I'm I'm not worried about Stephon Diggs being a wide receiver two rest of season. Mike, yeah, he's still top twelve, but that that top five ceiling that where he was drafted, Diggs or Metcalf rest of season. Oh, that's a really good question. Diggs for consistency. Um, I th if Russ is for sure back this week. Right, Metcalf is like the number six receiver on the year. Diggs is at twenty-two. Yeah, I right think now. I would take DK, uh, Jefferson or Diggs. Jefferson. Okay. Okay. It's still Ke Keenan Allen or Diggs? Diggs. Diggs. I love Michael Keenan. Okay. Okay. Emmanuel Sanders in this matchup. Diggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. The game's over. Got it. Uh, are we? Are we starting Emmanuel? Yeah, we are. Cole Beasley has not been practicing. I I think that he will play, but he is injured. Um, and and there is still a chance Cole Beasley uh, misses. So he got, he's ribbled. Yes, he is. Oh, is he, he ribbled? Is ribbled. Yeah. Oh. Um. So yeah, I think Emmanuel Sanders, Stephon Diggs should be played. Uh, for sure. And and uh, we cannot forget how bad the Jets are against running back. They are not. Yeah, a yeah, we, bad. We, we kind of stopped the, the discussion, but if Zach Moss is out, oh man, Devin, Devin Singletary, Singletary is in. He is like I would start him over great. He, I I would view him as a top fifteen back this week. I can't imagine you can't get him in your roster. There is at least one report that uh, somebody heard. Is this a good report to even report? It was mm. sh shared by uh, Dave Richard. So Richard, I, Richard, I call him Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Okay, Dave Richard from CBS. Dave, Dave Richard, oh. Dave, da Dave. Yes, um, get the name right. We heard that Ramondre Stevenson will be ready to play, but Damian Harris might not be. Mm. Wow! So flow okay. chart that one. Ramondre is in. If Harris He'll, is out, he will be active. active. Like yeah. you, they don't have a choice now. Do they have a choice that they screw us all again? Yes. Oh yeah.
Oh yeah. <sighs> this is this is good. Hold on, let me make a little trade offer here, and we can move on. Yeah, Dawson Knox, if he's back, are you playing him right away? Uh, yes. Yeah, sure. It was a it was a uh, broken hand, broken finger situation. Yeah, yes. so his legs are good to go. I would I'd put him right back out. He there. will need the hands for the catching. Oh, I, I get that, but I'm saying if he's if he's healthy, I'm not worried about are they going to ease him in or any of those things. Uh, it's too late, Mike. I'm already picturing him catching the ball with his feet. Ooh, and it's a imp- pretty funny mental picture and impressive. Now is in your imagery. Yes. Is this he takes to the air and like scissor clamps down on the ball, or when the ball is thrown to him, he goes into a handstand? It's much and... more gymnastics. Oh, okay. do you yeah. worry about the He's fall? He's tumbling, and then during one of the upside downs, he catches it. Oh, all right. Yeah, I do worry I worry about, about the fall? Yeah, the injury on on it, you're gonna you're gonna land on your head if you catch with your feet. Yeah, you usually. can land on your back. Yeah, still still injury risk. Tuck and roll. Okay. The Detroit also tough to, to maintain the, the possession. The you might want to take the shoes off. Uh, um, now, now we're getting really weird. The Detroit Lions at 0-6 taking on the 5-3 and three Pittsburgh Steelers. DraftKings Sportsbook line Steelers minus 8 at home. The over-under is 42.5. Did, did we see the 0-6 Detroit Lions? That's not accurate? I'm, I'm going to check my sources. We're going into week <laughs> but, uh, but 0-8. No. Yes, 0-8, 0-6. Uh, at one point, they Sorry. were 0-6. Couldn't let that one go. Um, that's because uh, Brooks tries to stay away from the Detroit Lions in our dock, <laughs> and uh, I don't blame him. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the questions on our green room show yesterday was, are we doing it? Are we go- I, the, the Detroit fans want to know. Oh, are they going are we do- undefeated? Are we doing 0-17? Are we making or- history? Did you say undefeated? Yeah. No, I, they're I, not. I, going... Uh- Defeated? I mean, what do we even call it? Fully defeated? Winless. Yeah. I like defeated. Yeah. They yeah, were they, fully defeated. They have been going defeated <laughs> for quite some time. Oh, sorry, Detroit. Uh, you know, this this game, however, it has a, a ridiculous 42.5 over under, and the advice might be smash the under. Uh, Pittsburgh, they've hit the over twice on the entire year. Detroit averages 16.8 points per game. They've hit the under in five of six, and the Steelers' defense is outstanding. I mean, this is not a game. This is not a game that will contain explosive performances. No, uh, because Pittsburgh games can't do that anymore. You always play Najee, and you always play Deontay. Uh, say, uh, there's one player who could have an explosive game. Najee is Najee. who you're saying. Yeah, yes. I mean, he, he could. Najee certainly... just has games. Right, it, it's they're not one explosive. Those... Two point eight a carry last week. Twenty two for sixty two. Three point six oh, a carry yeah. the week before. Twenty six for ninety one. This has been a 3.6 year for him. Yes, the end of the game fantasy stat line could be explosive, but the process of getting there will be drawing drive after drawing drive. Um, not a not a huge. That's a good word. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, drawing. I just assume it's a real one. I don't yeah, know. yeah I'm looking it up to be sure, but uh, drawing with an L. Y- you tell me. Um, here's my name is Simon. <laughs> That's not a word. I like out. to do drawing. <laughs> Yes! I didn't think that you were going until the end, but that was outstanding, Mike. Oh, you're getting two nines today. Oh, wow. Oh, we got, we got, hold on. I can't. Yes. I cannot find that word anywhere. Oh. What were you looking for? No, I was looking for drawing, um, <laughs> and I got there, and, and, and I was complimented for my use of it by you. So we all. Because it all sounded s- ro- like a robust. Yeah. Like, a, like ooh, I had never heard that before. Yeah, well, add it to your arsenal and tell people don't Google that. Um, out, this game is is wait it's a real word. How are you spelling it? D R A W. Yeah, I'm not seeing that word. Brooks just posted it. So it's to speak with lengthened or drawn out vowels. Yeah, that's like a, a southern drawl. Yeah. Right. Okay. What what a what a guy you are. Incredible work, team. <laughs> um, so in the, in this game, it's it's really I think there are um four and a half options to play. Okay. Not Najee is locked in. Mm-hmm. Deontay Johnson should be locked in. They are yes, one hundred. No one, no one Lock is safer. So let's let's move to the other side of the ball. There's two plays to me that are still you're going to put them in your lineup. It's DeAndre Swift and T.J. Hawkinson. I'm not messing around with the wide receivers. I know it could be Amon Ross, St. Brown, or Khalif Raymond. You know, you, people will have games. I'm just not. I don't hate myself enough to deal with trying to get lucky uh, in a bad matchup. Um, and then the against the zero and one Lions, 
uh, yes. Um, the question here is Pat Fryermuth. Can you stay Luth with the Muth? Hmm. The Lions are, you know, just average uh, against tight end. I would, I would say yes because yeah. of Claypool's absence. One hundred percent. That's exactly what I was going to say. So let's he's put. A goal, he's a goal line. You know, he's better than. He's probably better than Hunter Henry. It's not just goal line. Like he's getting. He is. He's a, been Luth in the midfield. He is a part of this offense. So there's three names I want you guys to order them: Dawson Knox, Dalton Schultz, Pat Fryermuth. I'm going to go with the. I'm going to go with uh, Dalton Schultz, then the Muth, and then I will go to Dawson, Dawson Knox off the injury. Yeah, bec because Schultz has been great for the majority of the season. I would, I'll still stick with that probability, but I think it's it's very close between him and Muth who I choose to play. Okay. Uh, he's, I think Dawson's like 95 percent of snaps. Muth is in the 70s these two weeks without Ebron. Um, but how do you not chase number two, number one finishes for Pat Fryer? Yeah, and it, it's not just touchdowns. Like, he's getting actual target volume. So, Luth. <laughs> um, Brooksy, should we do one more matchup or should we do starts? Starts of the week. Starts of the week. All right, week 10 starts of the week. I'm going to go with my quarterback here. It's Dak Prescott against Atlanta. The Dak is back. In a big way, uh, Atlanta giving up a ton of points to opposing quarterbacks, 23 fantasy points per game allowed on the road to quarterbacks. They got no pass rush, and um, Dak's going to deliver in the other minutes of the game that aren't the last four minutes with all of the weapons that he has. So uh, I'm going to go with Dak. My guy will be the last four minutes of the game. Don't watch it. It's Jalen Hurts at Denver. <laughs> he's going to be bad, which means he's going to be good for fantasy that's how it has happened for him over his short career. The matchup looks scary against Denver, but Hurts has a higher floor than the waiver wire guys. You're talking, I like Trevor Lawrence, but I'm not going to start him over a Jalen Hurts in games, and this is the real takeaway here. In games where the Philadelphia Eagles have been three-point-plus underdogs, dating back to last year, he has averaged 27 fantasy points per game. So he's he's in my lineup. And I, I like Ryan Tannehill this week against the New Orleans Saints. They have given up... A QB uh, quarterback four points in back-to-back -back weeks. And the Titans, they will try to establish it against the Saints, but I don't think that they will be able to. And they're they're seeing a bunch of passes. They have the third lowest pressure rate in, in the league, and it's like Tannehill gets it done uh, from a clean pocket. Running back start of the week, starts of the week. Uh, one word for you, Melvante. Oh, oh, delicious. Wait, I get to play them both? Uh, well, if you have either one, you should play them. because That's how I like my noodles. Melvante? Yes. Uh, Melvin, do you get that joke? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. Thank you. What, yeah. is, what is the joke? Uh, I'm, you, not, I'm not well-versed. Al dente? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that'll work. That, that's, how, that's a noodle thing, right? That is a noodle thing. You uh, want them perfectly al dente. That's a good noodle joke. <laughs> Melvin, Gordon, Javante Williams, I'm playing both of them. There's been three different weeks this year that they're both in the top 24. Javante Williams is good. Really he is good. good. And um it's so difficult because I've wanted to go and like make the end of season investment on him. I'm still scared. But it, it it's gonna be great this week. Philly is 29th against the run, fourth most rushing yards allowed. And um they're also <laughs> they're allowing the third most running back fantasy points, and they're doing it to non elite running backs. Like Chuba Hubbard had 133 total yards. And Jacobs and Drake both scored. And Leonard Fournette had 127 total yards and two touchdowns. So it's going to be good this week for both of those Denver running backs. Uh, I love the name. Um, I'm going to go with a smash play of Daryl Henderson this week in San Francisco. He okay. is going to be a top five running back. This is a reminder that he is elite for fantasy. Last week, the Rams, they sucked. He was the running back 37. But he is second in the NFL and touchdown expectation behind only Jonathan Taylor. Tied for second most touches inside the five-yard line. If you remember last week, San Francisco was gashed by James Conner. They've allowed the fifth most 10-plus run yards and ranked 28th in yards before contact. So I, I don't be afraid of last week's Daryl Henderson. Plug and play. And I tweeted this out because uh, on Tuesday because – the, the Nick Chubb COVID information came out after the waiver show. I said, Dearness moves to my top pickup of the week because of what he could represent. 
And it's a dude that got it done against the Denver Broncos. 22 for 142 yards and two rushing touchdowns. And the Patriots, while they, it, I get it on paper, it looks scary, but three straight weeks they've given up top 12 points to the fan, to the running back position. And so I just, and of course, if Nick Chubb is active, this is, I'm not playing Dearness Johnson, but just saying, like, if you held on to him or if you grabbed him off with a waiver wire, if Nick Chubb is out, I'm getting Dearness in my lineup as a running back, too. All right. Uh, by the way, we do have an update here. Mr. A.J. Green. Is he off the COVID list? He's off the COVID list. Okay. Is that interesting to you at all in the the fact that yes. it does it seem likely to you that Hopkins – I mean, he didn't practice again today. I don't expect Hopkins to play. I, think I agree. Kyler could play and Hopkins couldn't. And if that situation happens, that A.J. Green is interesting – um, just throwing it out there. If Kyler isn't playing, I'm probably not going to mess with AJ. All right, my wide receiver start of the week. I'm actually going to go a little deeper here. I'm going to go with Marquez Callaway of the New Orleans Saints. Oh, there you go. Uh, but I'm going to mention Deontay Harris at the same time because I think both of these guys are worth a start. Tennessee is dead last, like I said, against the wide receiver position. Um, they've allowed the highest opponent wide receiver target share. And, uh, you know, Callaway's number of routes run has picked up recently, 40, 32, 38 in the last three weeks. I think it'll be Simeon, which means a more consistent Winston-like passing offense as opposed to what Taysom might represent. Is Kamara slowed? Do they need to use these wide receivers? I think Callaway's a, uh, a startable asset this week. All right. Yeah, and I'm going with the guy that Andy said he didn't really love. I absolutely love him this week. I think Julio Jones is a smash play. I think he's very interesting. The, the Saints are not actually a good pass defense. They are giving up 34 fantasy points per game. Two wide receivers. That There's two wide receivers. There's A.J. Brown and Julio Jones. Julio looked good last week despite his fantasy finish because they were dominating that game. Um, and you've got Marshawn Lattimore, who's going to be on the one. And the one isn't isn't Julio there. Um, so, I, you know, they're allowing the six most fantasy points to wide receivers, fourth highest opponent uh, completion rate. They've been beat by the Falcons, the Giants, the Patriots, the Panthers have beat up um, and – he Julio Jones has been a Saints killer for his career. 90 receiving yards per game on average against the Saints. Before I give you my wide receiver start of the week, I need to point out are you you what button are you about? Oh yeah. Uh Andy wasn't joking when he said, Okay, but I need to go make a trade offer. No, he went and made a trade offer. Okay, so what was the trade? <laughs> so he just traded Brandon Ayuk for Ramondre Stevenson. Oh wait, he accepted my trade? He did. Well, I'll be darned. Yeah, it went through. I got the alert. I am the Damian Harris yeah, you manager. Have, yes. And I am thrilled by this wow. news. Wow. That's a that's a that's a smart move and you did it. Swiftly. Man, I used Brandon Ayuk <laughs> just perfectly. <laughs> Off of waivers. Maybe. Started him for a week. Shipped him out. Maybe. All right, for my wide receiver start of the week. Grab those key tire the the key tars. Fire up the synthesizers. Because we're going on vacation. And there's only one city that I want to visit these days. That's Pity City. The Jags giving up top 11 production to wide receivers in five of the previous six games, allowing the third highest expected points per pass attempt. They stink. I get it. It was a fun story. They beat the Buffalo Bills. Don't care. I'm playing Michael Pittman with full confidence, and I expect him to continue his tear. <laughs> Continue it. <laughs> Continued. Uh, Mike Gesicki is my start of the week at the tight end position. Baltimore is 31st against the tight end. And Mike Gesicki, I mean, Baltimore's recent, some of the tight ends that played against them, they had success. Noah Fant, 6 for 46 and a touchdown. The big C.J. Uzama game was 3 for 91 and 2 against Baltimore. Jared Cook had a nice game against them. And Mike Gesicki's averaging 70 receiving yards per game since week three. So, uh, yeah, he's a smash. Player. I mean, Parker is uh, on IR for multiple yeah. weeks, and whether it's Brissett or, or Tua, Gasicki is too important. Yeah, I, I love the Gasicki pick. I went to put him in, but you had him first, so it's I'm going Gesicki with picky. Mm. Oh, thank you. thank you. I'm going with the postman, <laughs> Dan oh. Arnold. Oh, <laughs> and that's what you get when the producers and Andy have buttons. Oh, I love it. The, the double up. <laughs> Uh, Dan Arnold against the Indianapolis Colts. Postman has delivered since coming to Jacksonville. He's averaging seven and a half targets and 55 receiving yards. <laughs> um, it, we, we were, we're out of control right yeah, now. We are, and we'll never rein it in. Um, the Colts 
are allowing the fourth most fantasy points to tight ends. Look at the last two weeks. You had Tennessee, nine-plus targets to tight ends and a Jeff Swaim touchdown. The Jets had 12 targets to tight ends and a Ryan Griffin touchdown. So I think Dan Arnold comes through in a big way this week. And I want to highlight whoever's playing tight end for the Washington football team. And at this point, it does not seem like it's going to be Logan Thomas coming off of the IR. He's sore. We're gonna He's going to test it tomorrow, and then we will see if he's out. I think that Ricky Seals Jones is in a in a fine position here to be a streaming tight end. Tampa Bay has consistently given up points to the tight end position. Top 12 points to the position in 6 of the previous 8 games. Like Ricky Seals Jones, 6 targets a game, the second most tight end r- uh, routes run in the span since he has taken over as the starter. He is he's the number 2 option for this team and they will have no choice. Washington will have no choice but to throw against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they try to keep pace and stay in the game. And I think that Seals is he's, – he, he's in play for a streamer this week. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. <clears throat> Freshly inked, I began to stink. Rotting with the prison's septic smell. Nay, I sat in my poo, mocked by the crew led by Pittsburgh's Chris Boswell. Number one. Fabulous. That was, I was there. The imagery, the rhyme scheme, I I am with you on your journey. Thank you. Number two. You have completely abandoned... Oh, there was number two in there. You, you have completely abandoned any charade that you are actually writing. <laughs> Damn! A hundred percent! I don't know what you mean! Like, we st- the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, Jason's really he's getting into this. doing some good stuff over he's, here. He's embracing the Boom Boom segment. Yes, I am. One hundred percent me. I'm writing these great... Uh, You've been rhymes. drawing out all these rhymes <laughs> uh-huh. on a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. Hey, an update for you. No Godwin during the uh, public portion of practice again today. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, I do want to speak briefly. Antonio Brown was catching balls from the jugs machine. Rob Gronkowski doing some light work. Um, I will speak to the fact that the team did not place Antonio Brown on IR. They could have. They still could have. So from a longevity standpoint and what Bruce Arians talked about uh, uh, yesterday – it's still not looking like it's, you know, this is not a long drawn out thing for Antonio Brown. They do expect him back out on the field soon. Yeah. And Otherwise we, they'd throw him on IR. And, and we did not, you know, cover the bucks, but if, if Godwin missed practice today as well, uh, you should, you should throw Tyler Johnson on your waiver wire or off the waiver wire onto the, onto the back of your team just in case. Cause he against Washington, if Godwin is out, he becomes very interesting. If A B is active, is he just right back in? Yes. Yeah, but he's yes. not going to be active this week. There's there's a chance he could be active this week. Yes, man. The that team video. The, I mean, may, the video I'm, versus what the head yeah, coach says are different things. So yeah, well, it's that's there, there's a it's very murky. He said, I don't there. know if he's going to make it back this week. Yeah, it's so. very murky. But saying if A B is out and Godwin is out, then Tyler Johnson against Washington is he's got to throw it somewhere. Is, is I think OJ Howard. I mean, maybe. you know, it's like Gronkowski is he's hurting, man. He is hurting. And if you're that team, you're looking at playoffs, right? I mean, for all these guys. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, OJ Howard. Sorry, I know we're running long here, but OJ Howard reminds me not everybody was part of the, the Green Room show last night. We got to let the Foot Clan in on our big money bet between whoever catches the next <laughs> first touchdown between Andy and I. I have um, Will Disley. Yeah. And you have. Jimmy Grandpa. Yeah, and so we're starting that after the bye. We're after start, he gets right, back right from away. The Don't worry, he's not going to catch one. Um, the stupidest bet in the history of bets. That was the goal. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. Jerry Judy signed jersey going right now for $15. That's the current price at pristineauction.com. George Kittle signed mini helmets at $41 right now. It ends tonight. Both of those do. But there's hundreds at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit. We'll be back with more matchups. On tomorrow's show, including two spins 
two spins of the Wheel of Shame oh, on tomorrow's episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the show. We'll catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.